welcome back everybody. So I'm waiting on a part for the AC box. So I decided, you know, since I got this out, I'm going to go ahead and work on the AC heater control unit. I'm going to freshen this up before it goes back into the car. Sometimes on these older cars, you may notice that uh, you got three of the fan speeds, either not high or something in between. One of them doesn't work. Uh, we'll address that. And I'm just basically going to tear this down a little bit. Um, there's only two switches. I'm going to clean both of those up. And then I'm going to take this front case off. And if this plastic needs to be polished, I might go ahead and polish that out just to clean that up. But first, we got to get off these little... Uh, knobs that are on here. So if you can see this, the knob just has a, an indentation in it and there's a little clip inside and that basically grabs it onto the metal of the the rod here. So I just used a, a window, it looks like a trim tool. I had a, I got a, a big kit of all these different plastic trim tools. We're just going to go in and right behind the switch and just apply a little bit of pressure and this should should pop right out there we go so that just comes right off so we're going to do all three of these because everything is coming out oh, okay put those off to the side small thin blade screwdriver and we're going to very gingerly pop this up and see if we can't move this plastic out because so we want to get this front fascia off without damaging anything. There's the top one. Alright, so that you can see that that's out. And all it is is a clip at the top and a clip at the bottom. So we're going to do the same thing for the bottom one here. Just a little bit of pressure to get that just enough up to pull it out there. Move these arms so I can get this loose. Okay, so as you can see, it's clear plastic. And on the underside is all the writing for the switches. So I'm going to clean up the underside because what I don't want to do is polish this and polish off all this paint on the inside. So underside, it's just I'm going to wipe it down, get it nice and clean. Probably clean both sides and then take a good look at it and see, do I need to polish this like aggressively? Like if you've seen any of the videos that I did for the, 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 uh, my rally gauge pack uh, and polishing the, the front cover on that, I may have to do that on this. I don't know. I'll look at it and see. But for now, it's going to sit off to the side. So then you've got... All this is is it's metal. And it's just an overlay, more or less. It just sits... It just sits in between the two and it's just a filler to give you like a solid black background. So move that off to the side. So now we're going to take care of the two switches that are on the inside. Quarter inch nut driver. Take both of these out. Two screws hold it in place. We'll take those screws out. Now let me let me hold this and I'll show you the back side here. So as as this arm in the back moves, it moves the switch. This switch. So this moves this around, there's your off, you can hear that click, that's the off switch. So anyway, so we're going to take this and sit it out here to the side. Okay, let's turn this up on its end, and then we'll fish this down in here. This one's kind of in a tight spot, so I use a flexible nut driver to get that one out. There we go. And, all right, so we're going to sit the housing itself off to the side for a sec. Let's take a look at these two switches. 
So we'll sit this one up here. Okay, so on the underside of the switch, you can see that little white clip in the center. It's this clip right here. So, and I'm doing this on the towel, and the reason I'm doing this is because when this thing comes apart, a bunch of little springs are going to come popping out of it, and I just want to make sure that uh, nothing goes rolling. When it hits this towel, it should kind of stay right where it's at. So, usually what I do, push on the one side of the clip, and then with my finger, I'll hold that side where it pushes up out, and then get the other side and then push it down, and usually it'll pop right out if it's not too finicky. Again, these are all 30-year-old parts, right? So we're being very careful with plastic. All right, so that side's compressed. Let's see if we can get this side out. Ah, there it is. Okay. So there's your little push pin, and then this thing just blew apart in my hand. So you've got these three springs. On the underside of the plastic, Three of these holes have little indentations in them, There's like they're little seats. And these three springs go down in those seats. And the springs sit in these pockets. And the springs basically put pressure on it so that this connection part and this connection part are pressed together. And then as this thing rotates around, it gives you your dis different switch functions. So... This looks a little corroded on the inside. As I've been taking this thing apart, I've been noticing a lot of the parts. I mean, maybe it's just the, the I had decent mileage on the vehicle when I bought it. It was like 50 something thousand miles. So uh, this stuff has been in pretty good shape. So this looks this looks like it might be some type of dielectric grease and it looks like the coloring on it is possibly the coloring of some of the grease or maybe it's starting to corrode a little bit what I'm going to do I'm going to clean everything up I'm going to wipe both pieces down get as much of this off as I can because I bought some dielectric grease that I'm going to use to put this back together and I'm going to hit this thing with a scotch bright and that way uh, I can clean up all these contact points and make sure that everything is good and clean. So all these connections, because a lot of times you, you may notice uh, if you take this apart, there'll be like uh, some burn marks where it's been arcing over time because the grease is kind of dried out. And uh, that'll cause a bad connection. Usually that's why one of your uh, one of the fan speeds will go is because you've, uh, you've lost a connection in here because it's been arcing because it's dry. So I'm cleaning all this up and... Then I'm going to hit it with a scotch bright just to clean all these contact points. <clears throat> so they're nice and good and clean. It's almost like the stuff that was on there stained it. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Because I'm going to hit this. Make sure all these contact points good and clean okay that side is done and then we'll hit the three spots on here I think I'll go ahead and hit these uh, contact points at the end as well. If I can get in there, and I use my little screwdriver, because it's just a matter of making sure that you have a good contact point. And these are for the connectors, so I can scratch out. 
some of the crud right here. Get down to good metal. That looks pretty good. This side is cleaned up. Now we want to get this thing back together <laughs> the way it came apart. Okay, now we've made a mess and we've cleaned everything up now. So we're going to start by putting this switch back together. So you've got the three springs. And again, there's these three holes that have little pockets in them. And these springs go down in these holes. And it holds them in place. Okay, we're going to sit that right down here. Let that sit. Put the bottom of the switch and we're going to put some dielectric grease down here. Okay, that is good and lubed and We'll put some right on these dimples as well. Okay. So if you can see by the arrangement of the springs, this thing is only going to go in one way. Because you can see that the, the, the holes that these uh, springs will sit in, the, the pockets here, are aligned in such a way you can't even, you can't put this thing together wrong. All right, so this one is way off to the side, and these two are at an odd angle. And then you've got these cutouts on both sides that fit down in the plastic. So we're going to get these down in here, and then that should, yeah, so the springs have those caught where they're at. And I'm basically going to let that rest right there. And then we'll come with this bad boy. We'll put this down on top, press that together like so, and then we're going to put our white clip back in. Hear that positive snap. And let's just test the function real quick to make sure this thing slides well. That seems to be doing all right. Okay, so this one is done. We're going to sit that off to the side and we're going to move on to our switch here, which is basically our fan speed switch. Same procedure. We're going to get down, it's way down inside this little crevice right here. That's where the pin is at. It's a black pin on this one. So we'll get down in here and we'll see if we can't move this one side and cock it down and then push the other. There it is. Okay. This one's a little different because you can see that there's this little tiny ball bearing that's in here. I'm going to make sure that stays off to the side. Because there is, see if you can see that, there is a little spring cup right there. That is where, yeah, there it is, that is where that ball bearing goes and it holds it in place. Let's take this off, springs are going to fall out. All right, so if we look at the switch, you can see these cutouts right here, these little dimples. This is where that ball bearing rides. Okay, this is a later design. If you have like a, if you have like a 78 to 80 or early 80s, it's not going to have that ball bearing. This is a, this is out of 87, so you're talking uh, this is the second design. You're talking like a mid late 80s. So same thing. Uh, the grease is kind of green on the inside, so I don't know if that's a little bit of corrosion mixed with the with the lubricant or not, I don't know, but I'm going to make sure that we go through the same process 
this one as we did with the last one. So it's going to be clean up, scuff, and then we'll reassemble. So nice and clean, and we're going to do the same procedure, get some dielectric grease down around these contact points. That way we don't have any arcing or anything crazy. This goes back together, and it should function like it should. I like that. And then put some right on the cups here. Where it makes contact. Sit that down. Making a bit of a mess now. Same procedure, right? You got the cup, three springs. They go down in these cups, these holes on the underside of the lever. And then, same deal with this. You can see how these springs are oriented, and there is no way really. To get this thing mixed up, it will only go in one way in order for this thing to sit down in these correctly. And that's it right there. So now we're just gonna let that gonna let that float on top. Then we're let's not forget our little ball bearing here. So the ball bearing goes in this little hole over here. I think I'll be able to pop that in once I get this together. So I want to try to get this on and make sure that this is where it's supposed to be. So we'll put this down. Make sure that goes in correctly. Yes. It's in right where it should be. Now we're going to let this side creep up a little bit because the spring tension is going to push it up. And then we can take this ball bearing and we'll push it down into the cup. There we go. And that seats right back down inside the switch. So now that is down. So all we got to do is put our clip back in, snapped back in place, and there's our fan speed and now you can see that that ball bearing in there is what gives it the positive click as it goes around alright so now sit that off to the side and we'll move on to the housing itself so we look at the housing on the underside where this swing arm is there's like a bit of grease that's in here. This is actually not in bad shape at all. Some of these, it'll be packed in and then there's like dirt and crud and all kinds of stuff packed in with it. And uh, the thing is just a gooey mess. I'm looking at the underside. And this is for the blend door. This is our blend door cable. So this is how you go from hot to cold and everywhere in between. And there's a section of section of the bottom of this plate here that uh, that has some grease on it, so this thing slides nice and smooth. So it actually looks in decent shape. So what I'm going to do is, instead of rooting around in this thing, I'm just going to use some some Sil Glide grease, and I'm just going to add to what's already there. and then leave what's there alone since my grease looks like it's in pretty good shape. So then we'll slide this all the way over to the far side and then I'll put a little bit on the back and just rub some some fresh grease in with what's there. 
since it looks pretty clean. And then for good measure, there's a slider bar up here. We're going to add a little bit down in this. Let's make sure that's all nice and lubricated. And then on the back side, you can see where this cable is at right in here. It's another contact point where it touches. So we're going to take some more and put it back down in this recess here. Get that good and greased up. Now let's move it all the way over. Then there's some on this side as well. some down in there. Everywhere there's a pin that's sliding on something, I want to just make sure that I've got enough of this grease in here that it's lubricated well enough. When this goes back together, it's going to give me many more years of smooth, easy function. And look at that. That is nice. I like that. That's good. Okay, so let's move over to the other side. I think the same thing. You've got... There's uh, two pins that this thing... Here, sorry. Two pins that this thing uh, moves on. So we'll grease those pins. And then this pocket down here has grease in it as well. So we'll get some get some grease down in that pocket just add to what's there because it actually looks like it's in pretty good shape and then we'll swing over to the other side put a little on this side down here get that area good and greased and a little bit on these pins more here. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that is moving very nice. And actually up, up here on the back side there's a bunch of indentations and there's a there's a small metal clip that you can see that actually it's got a little bit of pressure to it and it seats down in every one of those spots. They grease that too. So GM greased it. Let me put a little bit there myself. Alright, and then we'll move this slider down to the other side and we'll get just a little bit over here. Okay, because I've got both my switches cleaned and they're all back together. I think that's all that is left. So let's take a look at this. So it looks, it looks almost like grease from inside of here made it out onto this. Yeah, so what I might do so, I don't think you need to see this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a solution of maybe a little bit of warm water. I I'm, I'm, I'm definitely do not want to scrub any of this writing off. So, just a little bit of warm water and a soft, uh, like maybe I'll use like a cotton ball or something, but I'll just go and I'll just try to get whatever residue is on the back of here. And then clean this up, and then if I don't have any issues, then we'll be ready to put this thing back together. All right, so that wasn't bad. I just used some mild hand soap, cleaned this right up, and there was just some mild, um, I guess, like scuffing or, or dirt embedded in the front just from, I guess, hands dragging across it as it's being used. So I just used some mild plastic uh, wax and just uh, buffed the front of it and buffed right out. It's beautiful. So that's ready to go. I'll sit that down. So... I'm looking at the front of the, the face of this, and it's all just black and white. 
and it's kind of dull to me. I don't know. And I'm remembering older models, there was this little stripe in between the cold and the hot, and it went from blue gradually to red, and it kind of lets you know what side was what. And I thought, you know what? This car didn't come with that, but wouldn't it be kind of neat if it had it? So I found an image online of the front of, a, I think it was like an 82 El Camino uh, head unit, and it was a good straight on shot and I just uh, saved the image and then I just cut everything else out except this and there it is it's uh, it's the the cold the hot the little the little stripe so I printed out a second one and I actually cut it down and just uh, used a tiny piece of scotch tape and just taped it right to the the metal uh, overlay on this and I, I think it's gonna work perfect so and the best thing is, if, uh, if I don't like it, or if I want to change it, all I have to do is, is uh, take off the, 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 the cover that goes around this, pop this little plastic cover off, and then it's only one little piece of scotch tape holding it on, and then take it back off, and then I can go right back to stock. But I like that. I like it, and the fact that it's not supposed to be there for this year vehicle... I like doing stuff like that. So when someone looks in the car, they look at it and go, what is different about that? There's something, I don't know. Because this is definitely something that you would be used to seeing. You would see this uh, on, on quite a few different uh, AC uh, head units from, from different years in the 80s. It just wasn't on the 87. So I think it's kind of cool. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on with that there. And then if I decide I want to change it, I can just go back and change it. It's no big deal. Okay, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get this thing together. Move these switches out of the way. So I want to be able to turn this up so that I can get this in just the way I want it. That goes right on there. Make sure that's positioned right where I want it to be. I should just be able to snap this cover right down on to where I need it. Uh-huh. Look at that. And there you go. Cold to hot blend. I like it. Okay, so now these switches, these little uh, switch covers are really in good shape. All I had to do was basically just wipe them down and they were ready to go right back into their place. That's good for that one. coming together. All right, now we switch it around. Well, let's go ahead and put this in. Now, when this goes in, there's a slot right here, and this arm needs, that peg needs to go right down into that slot. And then once it's in there, then we can line up the bolt holes. And there's a peg right here. It's an alignment pin, so that way you know it's down in the exact right spot. Grab my two screws here. Put this back together. Very gentle. Again, this thing is 30 years old. No sense yanking this down too hard and breaking something right at the end when you want to fix it. Okay, and with the top switch in, all we have left is the blower fan. And then we're all done. It's been a fun little project. There we go. The whole reason I thought of this is because a guy on G Body Forum who goes by the handle Half Rod, H A F R O D, he's also got a YouTube channel, Half Rod's Builds, I believe it's called. If uh, if you go to my page and you look on the channel tab it's one of the uh, channels that I'm subscribed to uh, the guy's phenomenal and he actually uh, showed real quick how to do 
the uh, the cleaning of the switch in case it happened to not be working correctly. So I thank him for that. If for nothing else, he had there we go. He has. Let's get this last switch knob on. He has a. Uh, or he had, I'm sorry, he sold it, but he had a 1978 uh, Salon, Cutlass Salon, and I uh, painted it. I mean, it, it was, this thing was beautiful. The, 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 the Salons were called the Buttless Cutlass because of the, the back hatch. It was like a fast back hatch, and um, I don't like that body style at all, but he did such a phenomenal job on that car that if I had disposable income, I would have bought that thing. It, it was it was a work of art. It was beautiful. Um, so for nothing else, you can go look at that. But he's he's got quite a few videos. He's working on a Regal now, and he's also got a 55 Bel Air. Uh, it's, it's worth a look. So Half Rod, if you're listening to this, thank you, buddy, because uh, the information that you gave was priceless. All right. There it is. Updated. Got my cool little uh, blue to red for the cold hot. I kind of like that. And the switches have been cleaned. Everything's been greased. Yeah. So this is a fun little project. Now it's over. And hopefully the next time you see me, I'm going to be putting that AC box back together. I'm looking forward to that. So if you like this, please do me a favor. Down below... There's a place to subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, it helps quite a bit. Um, YouTube doesn't get a crap about us guys unless we got subscriptions and likes. So if you're watching this and any of this is interesting to you or, or entertaining at all, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share it with someone. I need to get more people involved on this. I'm trying to, to kind of build this up a little bit. So... I know it's a little one-sided just because I'm working on one car and it's very very brand specific, but there's got to be a bunch of people out there interested in this stuff and I need to find them somehow. So anyway, I'm rambling at this point. I'm happy with this and I think, uh, I think that'll be it. So that's it for this one and then next time you see me, hopefully I'll be putting that AC box together. So have a good one guys. See ya.